purpose is how I can raise up ordinary men, turning them to become supernatural beings, financial apostles, making life better, bringing people from the dungeon of sin, bringing them into the faith, planting their feet, and rising them. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Somebody shout a bigger amen. Pick your Bible while we remain standing as a custom here to read the word of God to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Our anchor scripture today shall be taken from the book of 2 Chronicle chapter 20 from verse 17 down through 25 from second chronicle chapter 20 from verse 17 through 25 and um, we are going to read and i want you to get yourself connected yes shall not need to fight in this battle set yourselves and stand here still and see the salvation of the lord with you O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of Kohathites and the children of Kohites stood up and praised the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Teko. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established, believe his prophet, ye shall prosper. In verse 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and they should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Monsia, which were come against Judah as they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Monsia, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat, his people came to take away the spoil of them that were found among them in abundance, both riches with dead bodies, precious jewels, which they stripped off for, the, for themselves more than they could carry away and they were there three days in gathering of the spoil it was so much let's read verse 25 and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to to take away the spoil of them they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they had stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. May the Lord bless his reading of his word and sit down on your enemy's head balandociously. Somebody shout fire! I didn't hear that one well. Shout it, let your enemy know that you are shouting. I think I'm for some people here, it's like some people are not ready to shout that well. Hallelujah. 
Today, God will be speaking to us on what I titled The Wonders of Praise and Worship. Can you celebrate Jesus? Tell anybody the wonders of praise and worship. An act of gratitude is an heart that can appreciate the hand work of God. When a heart is full of praise, the heart is appreciative. Many a times we have challenges that we don't see a need to glorify and magnify God. When you begin to sit down and look around your vicinity and look what is going on, you will have a reason to magnify God and to praise God. As I'm talking to you right now, there are people who are fighting for their life. There are people who are on the who are under oxygen trying to try to breathe through an artificial means as i'm talking to you right now there are people who just wish they could see me the way you are looking at me right now as i'm talking to you there are people who have been born to this earth who have never seen the beauty of the works of god i remember talking to a man of god who was blind and he is married with four kids and he was sharing with me he said man of god i don't know why god decided to take my windows to this earth i i hear the voice of my beautiful wife and i can only just imagine how she look by the picture i paint in my imagination i hear the voice of my children i can only touch them but i cannot see them i wish that god can just open my eyes even though for just one minute for me to just see the wonders of his work it is enough for me to praise god you know you might not understand what it takes to praise god we are too much complaining about what god has not done that we cannot appreciate god for what he has done you see a thankful art is a praiseful art an appreciative art is an art of worship you must understand that whenever you complain to god somebody is looking at that your mouth that you used to talk that you say god has not done anything and say i I wish I can open my mouth and talk. I am just deaf and dumb. I don't know. I don't know. There are people who wish to have the legs that you have. When you go to the hospital, if you have ever gone there to pray for the sick, you will know how to worship God. You will see some people who cannot eat through the normal process, who are to who are to take pap and any other thing through the nursery. Then you understand that our God is worthy to be praised. There are a lot of people who have died for one reason or the other. You are not better than them. You are not handsome than them. You are not holier than them. You are alive by the mercy of God. You are alive by the grace of God. You are alive because he kept you. Because his mercy kept you. That's why I ask you. Have you just asked yourself? You shouted Happy New Year into 2014. If you can look back, a lot of people that started this year are no more. Either by terrorist attack, either by accident, either by sickness, either by an unexplainable plague of the enemy. They are no more. And that's why you must understand the wonders of praise. There's one thing we will never do in heaven. We will never pray in heaven. There will be no prophecy in heaven. There will be no deliverance in heaven. There will be no healing in heaven. There will be no casting of demons in heaven. But one thing we will not stop doing it is worshiping and praising God. The Bible said every day continually that the angels the cherubims and the angels of heaven they stood continually in the presence of his royal majesty they say holy holy thou art holy do you hear what the scripture say he said and the lord inhabit the praise of his people what does that mean praise is the natural habitat or the spiritual habitat of god the house of god when a man is full of praise god overlook his weaknesses why did god call david a man after his own heart it wasn't that david was a perfect man 
David was a worshiper. David was a praiser. I am not talking about a singer. You can be a singer and know many songs, but you don't understand who you are singing to. I'm talking about being a praiser, being a worshiper, understanding how to praise God, understanding how to reference God. Because each time you reference God, you remember him of his sovereignty. Each time you praise God, you remember him that is Adonai. Each time you worship him, you remember him that is the Alpha and the Omega. Every king want to be praised. Every king want to be worshipped. Each time you take away praise and worship from God, you insult his ability, capacity, and the reason why he created you was for you to worship him. You were created for worship. You were created for praise. And each time you withdraw the praise from God you make God look at you and understand that you are not fit to live can I talk here can I talk here is somebody hearing what I'm saying praise and worship is not singing choruses no praise and worship is not special number Praise and worship is the heart of the worshiper connecting to the creator. Praise and worship is adoration. Magabarakata. Can I talk to somebody here? I see there's something you will do today. Do you know why the devil has surrounded you with problems? He doesn't want you to see the majesty of God. He wants you to complain and ask and say, what has God done? I can tell you, God has done one million and one thing. God has done one million and one thing. Am I talking to somebody here? Even though I am about to die, God is magnified. David said, my soul does magnify the Lord and everything within me. Praise the Lord. He said, even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Can I talk to somebody here? The Lord be worthy. The Lord be magnified because I know that is the creator and the, of the heaven and the earth even the plants they wave their hands they wave their head to worship him even the sun and the moon they take bow to worship him the stars they worship him what of you a living being if you cannot worship god you are a dead man when we praise god he raised us Praise is the secret of our rising. When we praise God, he raised us. Am I talking to somebody here? Praise is to extol, to glorify and magnify God. Praise is to extol, to glorify and magnify God. Praise means to commend, to applaud, or to magnify God. Praise means to commend, to applaud, to celebrate the majesty of God. Praise is not the same as flattering. Now let me tell you what praise does. When people flatter a leader, there's a way you can go, oh, your excellency. Oh, you are the best. Among all the politicians, you, your name is everywhere. You are the most popular. You are praising him. But it might not be coming from your heart. Because you are praising him because of what you want to get. When you praise God, you don't praise God for the favor you will get. You praise him because he's qualified. He's estimable. He's not the son of man that he should repent. He's not trying to impress you. He's not looking for any political position. He is the only leader that can never be impeached by any parliamentary system. He is the only king that will live forever. Ha, you don't understand me. He is the only king that stays on the throne and the throne can never be taken away from him. So, when you praise God, this is what you do. You tell him and make his head too big to swell up. 
in the Yoruba culture where I come from, when an Oba stands up and you, now, you begin to praise the Oba, he first sits on the throne. Then you begin to tell him about what he has, his forefathers have done. Then you tell him who he is. Then you tell him his capacity. Then you tell him how he has done so many wonders. When you begin to tell him, then he stands up from the throne. Then he takes the Abada and put it here. Then he takes the Abada. As you are still talking and you are praising him, he carries his Urukere. Then he shakes the body. Then he takes the step. And everybody say, Kabiyoye Osi. They prostrate before him. Praises makes God to rise up from the throne. Each time you praise God, God stands up and says, Devil, hear that. My children are praising me. Am I talking to somebody here? Each time you praise God and you are not flattering him, he stands up from the throne. He looks at who? Who is calling my name? Who just said the lion of the tribe of Judah? Who said I am that I am? Who said the one that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we have asked? Who is calling Jehovah Shammah? Who is calling Jehovah Nisha? Who is calling the God that parted the Red Sea by the bread of his nursery? He will say, Amen. In one case, they are calling me. Who is calling that God that entered the lion's den and, and sealed the mouth of the lion? He said, Yes, I remember when I do that for, for Daniel. Who is that God that entered the furnace as the fourth man and made the fire to become an AC for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? He said, Yes, he's talking about me. Who is that God that opens the prison door for Paul and Silas? when they pray, when the sound, the Holy Ghost came down when you begin to praise God his royal majesty will stand up and begin to shake his body because praise make God to enter into a realm where he celebrated I must tell you, he said my glory I share with no man, each time you praise God, you are telling God I am not worshipping any other God except you Sit down, let me talk to you. When you praise God, you are telling God, I am not worshipping Obatala. I'm not worshipping Songo. I'm not worshipping a dead God. Ah, my God. I am worshipping you, a living God. I know who you are. I know how powerful you are. Praise, praise, praise makes God to rise up from the throne. Listen to me. When you praise God, you become like angels. When you worship God, you become like angels. You have direct access to the throne of mercy. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? You cannot be planning to go to heaven and not be a praiser and a worshiper because that is a carryover when we get to heaven. You cannot be saying I want to be a candidate of heaven and during time of praises you stand and look at people dancing during time of worship you say what are they saying you are not planning to go to the heaven that my father is am i talking to somebody here each time you praise god it does not mean your problem are absent but you magnify god and smaller size your problem you am i talking to somebody here each time you praise god God become magnified. God become bigger size. And your problem becomes smaller size. Somebody shout fire. Somebody say freeze. Mm. I see a new beginning here. I see a new beginning here. Is somebody hearing what God is saying here? Say I believe. I believe. Worship means to reference in devotion to God. Now there are two things. When you worship God, you bring yourself down before him. Because worship is an act. Not just lips, utterances. Worship will involve all your body. Am I communicating? And not just kneeling down to sing before him is beyond that coming to service 
sitting down, honoring God is an act of worship. Coming in time, when we talk about worship, it is referencing God even despite the fact you have not seen him. It is the fear that you actually have for God that is worship. When it is time, when you enter the church and not use your phone, you worship him by doing that. Because you understand. You can appear before the president of this country and make phone call in his presence. When you worship somebody, you fear him. Because worship, you are saying that God is a reference point and you should be referenced. In worship, we come in humility. John chapter 4 verse 20. Say our fathers worship in this mountain. And he say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. The woman was talking about a place, a designated place for worship. Now look at what Jesus said in verse 21. Verse 21. Jesus said unto a woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. In verse 22, he said, ye worship, ye know not what you worship. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 22, 3. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him so you must understand that worship is not done by flesh it is done by the spirit the spirit it comes from the spirit when you see a man roll himself before god it cannot be an act of the flesh. It must come. It is the spirit of God. He said the hour cometh. And there are two types of worship. The first one is vain worship. And the second one, which we are just read now, is true worship. And true worship is a worship that we connect with truth and spirit. There are some of us who come to church to worship God. And yet, we have something we keep at home. That we bow down to. Because in worship... You are submitting your totality to a deity. It is either God or a strange God. So that's why we ask, who are you worshipping? Because if you worship God in truth and in spirit, you will not have a charm and you call the name of Jesus. When you worship God in truth and in spirit, you will not have an idol that you pour oil on top. So am I talking to somebody here? In praise, we utter words to God. But in worship, it involves a lot of action. We submit ourselves to the sovereignty of God without, without corrupting the excess of our, our declaration to God. I, I am seeing true worshipers coming out here. The problem we have in the church, we have Sunday tonic there are bring Christians. Christians that come to church but yet can go to Habalis. Christians that come to church and yet can have a strange idol that they worship. That's not the kind of worship here. I'm talking about the worship in spirit and in truth. And when we begin to worship God in spirit and in truth, he said, he said, for God is a spirit. And those that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because our God is a spirit. And when you understand true worship, I'm telling you the truth, you will not complain about the current stage of your life. Whether you are in the pit, you say, we give thanks to the Lord. The Lord is warning. Whether there is a challenge, the devil wants to take away your act of worship and praise. Because he knows if he silence your mouth, God will replace you. You know what God, Jesus told them why he was what marching into Jerusalem. The people were saying, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. As they were saying that, the people begin to shout and say, keep quiet. And Jesus said, if you said that they should keep quiet and not praise me, I will raise up the stone. That is how God compares a man that has not, that does not have the spirit to worship. God compares you as a dead man that 
stone is better than you when you are not a worshiper. God can replace you with a stone, a non living thing. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody shout fire. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the heart. Yes. Hosanna. 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 Hosanna in the heart. Yes. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted, O oh Lord. My God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the high, high, yes, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the high, high, yes. Hosanna, you are lifted up and you praise him. The devil is sad. The reason why the devil wants you to be in sorrow, he doesn't want you to see any need to worship him. Ah. Psalm 150 verse 6 said, he said, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Let everything, everything include dogs, cats, animals, praise the Lord. That's why I know that animals praise the Lord. He said, let everything, everything, including mosquito that has bread, praise the Lord. Anything that is alive, let him praise the Lord. Let everything, if God can open the mouth of the ox, when Barak and Balaam were in contest, so you must understand anything can praise God when they have bread let everything let everything I am sure that God's animals they praise God they have a way to praise God the birds they have the way the bed don't just sing they sing to the majesty of God the plants they praise God if these things can praise God how much more you that was created in the image of God and his likeness. I don't wake up in the morning to ask God for needs. No. That's the wrong way. In the Yoruba culture where I come from, you don't wake up in the morning and begin to ask your father something. You prostrate. You grieve. Daddy, a car. I wake up and I said, Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come, come from heaven, not the Holy Spirit. This one, Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know, I know you come from heaven. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is on the 
Troy. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. It is an error to call your father in the name of Jesus. I need a car. You must greet your father first. It's an insult to call your father. You have not paid homage and honor. That's why some prayers are not answered. Some prayers are insult to God. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for what you did yesterday. I thank you for saving my life from that accident. Our royal majesty, omnipotent, the lord of my soul, the bishop of my life, my inspiration, my melody, my joy, my pillar, my Mount Zion, the joy and the strength of my life, my fortifier, my banner, the one that is over me. I worship you. After you have now worshipped him, that is when you ask him for it for anything without worship and praise it is an insult it's an insult you don't wake up in the morning and start asking god for something you say in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord in the morning in the morning Morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, 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 I will rise and praise the Lord. You know what David said in Psalm one oh. Psalm 100, or Psalm 100, verse 4. Look at what David said in Psalm 100, verse 4. He said, Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. What does that mean? This is how we should enter the church of God. When you are about to enter the gate, you say, Father, I thank you for saving my life. I Thank you. You are entering. You are not just entering the church like that. You enter with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving in your mouth. Thanksgiving is appreciating God for what he has done and what he has not done. Father, I thank you for saving me from that accident. I thank you for providing the money. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my career. I thank you for being a graduate. I thank you that I'm still alive. I Thank you for my political career. David said, I will enter his court with praise. After I enter his gate with thanksgiving, when I'm entering inside the church, which is his courtyard, because in the courtroom, you don't talk anyhow. You say, I will enter the court with praise, knowing that it's a veracious judge, knowing that he's the judge of all, that we judge our intent, that we judge the things we do in secret and the things we do openly. You say, said father i will say that this is the day that you have made am i talking to somebody here i will enter his gate i will enter his heart we praise i will say i will say this is the day that the lord I will rejoice, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. The Lord has made me glad, he has made me glad. To know that I am so glad, I will, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has, he has made me glad, to know that I am so glad. Look here. If you understand how to praise God and how to worship God, you will not be a complainer. When I remember where I'm coming from, <laughs> champion is not champion could will be eight years. It doesn't mean I'm eight years in ministry. I have put ten years of my life in church planting and I saw suffering 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 10 years in church work suffering before i started this one 
So when you add it together, it's 18. And I, I, I know where I'm coming from. Anytime I wake up in the morning, I don't just ask him for questions. No. I just thank him. There is a level you get to in your life that you stop complaining about what God has not done. You allow what God has done to overshadow what he has not done. Then you will see answers. God gets irritated. God, look, angels have gone to gossip you to God. They say, Baba God, look at him. He's a wicked man, unthankful man. This was the man you saved from accident. He would have been a dead man if not for your intervention. Look at the way he's talking about you. Look at the way he has left the church. Look at how he comes to church. He comes to church late. He does not even respect and honor you. He is not fit to live. Let him die. David was a man after God's heart. David was a man. David was a man that praised God. He said, I don't know why the wicked prosper, but in it I know that my redeemer liveth. I know he that watcheth over Israel does not sleep, nor slumber. He said, I will praise God with tambourines. I will praise God with the instrument. He said, let all the head cry for joy and shout for the praise of him that is above all. You must understand that each time you magnify God and you praise God. God looks at what he has not done and do it. You have children at home. You will never give anything to your child if after you have given him one, two, three, four, he never says thank you. Even an husband to a wife. If your wife does not appreciate what you do for her you will become stingy naturally to her the greatest problem we have in the body of christ is unthankful and un unappreciative heart i have seen how people can collect money even from a man of god you help them they can't even say thank you to to the man of god how much more to the god who provide it From the beginning of my journey in life, I knew what it takes to appreciate God. We started our church for the period of seven years. We never had a credible drum set. The only time we play drum in the church, jazz band, it is during anniversary. And that anniversary, it is one drum set like that, that is very local. That they're doing them, they're doing the bad on there by local people who go and rent it. Then we beat the band. The person drumming the band does not know how to beat it. We dance to the rhythm as if we are dancing break dance. Anyhow, the joy is that we we have a reason to thank God. The church was not growing, but every of the anniversary we will celebrate God. We celebrate God for what He has not done. For what he has done. A thankful heart. Is a grateful heart. I want to spend time. On praise. I've told you there are two types of worship. Lest I forget before I go forward. And I said. There's true worship and there's vain worship. My two chapter. 15 verse 7 to 9. Talks about vain worship. Matthew chapter 15 verse 7 to 9. Let's, let's add that. Ye hypocrite. Where did Isaiah prophesy of you? Say. Verse 8. These people draw it near unto me with their mouth. And honored, honored me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me. Teaching for doctrines. The commandments of men. He said and he called the multitude. And said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into thy mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth of him that defileth a man. Well, let's leave that there. What he was saying there that he said, He said, These people draw close with their lips to me, but their heart is far. 
This is one of the reasons why people look at some men of God and say, this one is not supposed to be used by God. Because there are some chief judge that we have in the body of Christ. Who know how to judge every man of God and they are the only righteous man of God. Every other man of God is fake. They are the only original. Do you know why? Because in their own standard, <laughs> there are certain people that should not be used by God. A Barak boy like me, a born Muslim, why should I be used by God? Don't you see the way I'm rascal on the altar? I'm rascal on the altar. And it's very important because God knows there are some problems that will not answer to gentility. That's why he brought me. A Barak boy, a soldier, military blood. Military blood is flowing in my bloodstream. If you see me, you understand that I'm a product of a military man. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm very happy. Am I talking to somebody here? Some people look at us and say, why should God use this man? But you see, God does not look that way. God looks at the heart of a man. The heart. It is the heart. It's not what a man say. You can talk so better and your heart is far from God. So, he said, men look at the outward appearance, but I search the intent of the heart. 